Ulster and Ireland A International Peter Miller returns to the front row and he together with fellow Ulster and Irish A International Davy Tweed will be the cornerstone of the Ballymena pack. The other change is behind the scrum where Ulster left wing Davy Smith returns and he like Derek McAleese and the captain Mickey Rainey will be playing their fourth cup final in five seasons. Dungannon feel exactly the same side as they have all the way through the competition. There's pace in the wings with Ulster representatives Ronnie Carey, who's played for Ireland, and Tyrone Harv, and a wily scrum half in Ashley Blair. Up front, current Irish international Paddy John seems to get better with every game, and beside him his mentor and the man to whom this final means so much, the great Willie Anderson, the skipper. Every single member of the Dungannon Cup winning team of 1976 has gathered here at Ravenhill this afternoon to hope that Willie Anderson will emulate the feats of this man, Stuart McKinney. When Gannon's most capped international until Willie Anderson came along, 25 times he played for Ireland, was a member of Willie John McBride's Great Lions team of 1974, and the man who had the distinction of being the last Gannon captain to lift the senior cup. Ballymena take the field first, their fourth final appearance in five seasons. And for Ballymena, uh, it's been a pretty miserable season in terms of the league. Uh, with me, former Irish international and former Irish coach Jimmy Davidson. And Jimmy, I suspect that Ballymena, um, even if they do win this cup, it won't be any real compensation for having lost in the league. No, obviously not. The league means so much nowadays. Uh, but Ballymena will be looking for this match to actually restore their pride and get back into winning rugby again. Dungannon, Dun on the other hand, uh, this is something special for them. They haven't been here since 1976. There's a great number of the boys who played the 76 side who are out here in support. Great volume of support from the whole of the Dungannon people. Refereeing the Senior Cup final this afternoon, the former Ulster fullback in Cambridge Blue and consultant radiologist from Hollywood, Dr. Graham Crothers. Stuart Lang, Ballymena's fullback, gets the 93rd Ulster Senior Cup final underway on a very glorious afternoon that looked a bit overcast this morning. But the sun has come out and Stuart Lang has committed a rather fundamental error at the outset and hasn't uh, put the ball 10 metres and that gives Dungannon bidding for their first cup final since 1976 they put into the scrummage and a very definite psychological advantage. Ashley Blair, the Allen B scrum half, good shove though by Ballymena. Jeremy Hastings, that's Blair on support, Ronnie Carey had overrun him so he had no option whatsoever but to put the ball into touch and he did that quite adroitly but a good early scrummage there by Ballymena. Ballymena who won the cup in 1989 in 90 and 91 and the first two of those cup wins coincided with them winning the Ulster Senior League and as we were discussing earlier really there's a great deal of pride at stake for Ballymena. that's Johnny Caskey Bruce Logan who scored the try against Malone in the semi-final got up at the second attempt but it wasn't straight and Graham Crothers has decided that Dungannon for the second time in this game will have to put into the scrummage. Sort of looking to get in the front row, all three of them, former members of Queen's University. Davy Miller on the loose head side, Hugh McCackie in the middle, and Gary Leslie in the tight head. That's a better Dungannon scrummage, and nicely controlled by Jeremy Hastings. It's Blair, that's a typical chip for him. Keith McGarry to chase, but it's drifted straight into touch. So, I would say Jimmy Davis honors even in the scrums. Uh, Yes, uh, we've already seen Ballymena push the Dungannon side and Dungannon push the Ballymena side, but I think Dungannon's tactics are already fairly clear. Winning the ball, push Ballymena back into the 22, keep the pressure on. I think Dungannon will settle very early in this game. Johnny Boyd at the back plays uh, on the open side, but prefers to wear number six in front of him, Jeremy Hastings. At the back, the former Irish Schools International, number seven, Wayne Pollock for Ballymena. That's untidy, but Ballymena win it, and again it's Bruce Logan who pulls it in. Peter Miller, number three, who missed the semi-final. The Ballymena tight head prop, lending his weight. His match it. And that may just have drifted straight into touch. Very difficult, taken very quickly by Ronnie Carey. Stanley McDowell gets outside Davy Smith. And Graham Crothers on the spot. Spotted that the Dungannon, an Irish under-21 full-back. Stanley McDowell put a foot in touch. So Ballymena inside the Dungannon half for the first time in this game. I know that very crucial area in modern rugby. That didn't look too straight. It's come back in the Dungannon side and it's well taken on by the pack. When Pollock snatches it for Ballymena and makes good ground. That's it swallowed up by Paddy Johns. 
The driving by Dungannon, a great response by them. It's McGarry, Burns, McDowell, Tyrone Howe. That's not a great pass for the Ulster wing. Well, he's got outside the former Dungannon player, Brian Buckley. Uh, Ballymena there very quickly. So early nerves, you've got to say. A lot of bad handling. I think Dungannon was just a little bit anxious to get it across the line. I think they'll settle in time. Tyrone Howe certainly showed a lot of pace, though, getting, right, getting outside his winger. Dungannon are within a metre or so of the Ballymena line. So the throw's got to be right. Tweed gets the tap. It's loose. And it was carried over the Ballymena line. So it'll be Dungannon's put into the scrum. It's now, if ever, Dungannon needed a big scrum. It's now ten and a half minutes gone. And that's how close they are. Blair, good strike. That's a quick pick up. Hastings. Johnny Hastings. Willie Anderson's there with him. Ballymena trying to drive them back. And they may have just impeded that ball. They've won it. This is Paddy Johns. He gets it to Johnny Boyd. And Johnny Boyd gets in for his second cup try and how very important and he's been popping up like that all season Johnny Boyd 11 minutes gone and Dungannon take the lead it was Paddy Johns who's had a, a couple of splendid sevens tournaments who made the initial thrust and the Ballymena defence which had all really gone into the scrummage was nowhere to be seen yeah, what's even, even more interesting here Jim is the strength of the Dungannon pack they're able to win the ball comfortably uh, Paddy driving through beautifully, leaving it off to the ever-supporting Johnny Boyd. But there's four or five Dungannon players in support of... I think we're beginning to see the strengths of, the, of the, uh, that Dungannon pack really beginning to play. And we're only ten minutes into the game. Keith McGarry. Yes, and right between the posts and we've 12 minutes gone and then Gannon favours for this cup seven the points to the good great support here much of it for Dungannon that's McGarry support by John's always oh, made fine ground the big man that's Johnny Boyd he's not going to get a second already is he great support Archer McCacky couldn't hold it's killed on the ground again by Johnny Hastings and Blair is there and then Gannon Spurred on by the first try by Johnny Boyd, really did splendidly, and a fine run. There was a beautiful line-out, great support by Paddy John, and then out to Johnny Boyd. Unfortunately, they just lost that little bit of the cohesion. Kaki for Dungannon, Paddy Johns, nicely done. McGarry, Gary Leslie on the charge again. Well, has he got his body turned? Balamina were offside from that line-out, not an infringement at the ruck. And uh, words exchanged between Hugh McCackey and uh, Stephen Lusk. But well, this will give Keith McGarry a pretty decent chance to stretch the Dungannon lead. And that's the distance that he has to try to sort out. Mickey Rainey number 13 leading Ballymena in this final because the uh, skipper for the season Kenny Andrew has unfortunately had to retire from the game due to recurring concussion so Mickey Rainey who captained the side in the 1989 and 90 season stepping into the breach McGarry that is a very very fine kick and deep from Keith McGarry and that takes his points total for the season to over 300. He had 299 until he took the field today, until he took this kick. So Keith McGarry now has 302 points for the season. And Dungannon are 10-0 up. And that was a lovely, lovely kick. McGarry. Again, that's a good kick for his pack. And again, Paddy John is first there. And again, Gary Leslie tidies. That's good organisation by the Dungannon pack. Nothing much happening there, except that Ballymena have been penalised. And somebody has said something, and Graham Crothers is the wrong man to chat to. Colin Wallace has another little talk to him, Willie Anderson. 
It's well moved by Anderson. There's McDowell. He's got pace. And he's outside Simpson, who got a despairing hand to him. And Balamina tried to go on the counter. And no advantage coming to them. And that was well moved. Willie Anderson put in a pass there, Jimmy, that a lot of outside halves would have been proud of. Willie's a very astute person. He took the ball outside Keith McGarry and a long pass, beat three men and set, set uh, standing with goal clear into a space. So half an hour gone, ten minutes to the interval. Palomino nil, Dungannon ten. In this 1993 First Trust Senior Cup final. Anderson rather untidily. Ronnie Carey lets it go. Bruce Logan swoops. Stephen Lusk scrapes it back with a bit of help from Booth. Match it. Nice jink. That's Booth again. Lovely turn of speed for the prop forward. He may even have kept going. Mickey Rainey. Simpson to Buckley. Buckley this time has got past high. And that's a great try for Balamina. Wonderfully well done by the youngster who played his early rugby at Dungannon. He's come to Balamina this season and that will give him immense satisfaction. It was well worked back by Simon Booth. Now this is typical Andy Matchett, the lovely little jink he got inside a couple of players. The support there from Booth and as good a dummy as you'll see and not a bad sidestep either by the loose head prop. Now he flipped that out delightfully. McAleese carried it on. Mickey Rainey to Alan Simpson and the last pass was timed brilliantly. How he hesitated ever so slightly and Buckley was gone and in and that was a great try for Balamina. And it all stemmed from pressure by Wayne Pollock and by uh, Bruce Logan. We see Booth, Dungannon connections. Uh, he won't be too happy, Dungannon people won't be too happy with him there, but the ball out moves sweetly by Balamina. Tyrone Howe virtually having no opportunity. And a lovely run in for the corner. About two minutes of normal time remaining in this first half. Davy Tweed again pulls it in and makes ground. The Irish A International. McAleese. Whack. Now that's hung nicely for his pack. Bravely done by McDowell. Cleverly done by Blair. Not so cleverly done by Archer. Chance for Balamina. Taken on by Logan. Match it. Graham Crothers slightly in the way. That's for Davy Smith to chase. Underneath it. It's Hugh McCacky the hooker. He was covering back well. Well, Dungannon will be, I think, quite pleased, Jimmy, to hold on to five points if they can do it at half time. And Davy Smith really had other ideas because he charged on Hugh McCacky's kick and had it not been for clever Dungannon defence, he might have been in. But as it is, Balamina have got the penalty and one wonders, will Derek McAleese have a crack at goal? And that really came right out of the blue. Yes, Jim, uh, John Gannon are guilty of being architects of their own demise. They're rushing things, to, to, they knock down there by Davy Smith. Davy Smith's very, very fast, very alert, putting them John Gannon under pressure. John Gannon have to settle it. Uh, they were guilty of an error immediately prior to that incident. Anderson, I think, has had some short, sharp words to his pack and to his team in general about just uh, relaxing ever so slightly at what's a vital stage of the game because three points here to Balamina would uh, give them considerable encouragement and would close the gap to just two points. And that's the man who has uh, that task in mind. As we go into injury time, Derek McAleese from the narrowest of angles to close the gap. Oh, he kept that low and he kept it true. And what an important kick that is for Balamina and for Derek McAleese. And Graham Crothers decides that as Derek McAleese strokes that ball beautifully between the Dungannon posts, the end of a very entertaining first half has come with Dungannon leading Balamina by 10 points to 8. And 
Sun very much in the eyes of the Ballymena men. That won't bother them. Caskey. Tweed gets it again, despite attentions from Anderson. McAleese. Rainey. Simpson. Good Dungannon defence and well organised too. They need this one, Ballymena, and they've got it. An offside against Davy Miller. And the chance for Ballymena to go ahead for the very first time in this game. And cliche though it may be, Jimmy, the vital times are really, in terms of scoring, before and uh, just after half time. You're absolutely right, Jim. And the way Ballymena put pressure on Dungannon and got that score just before half time has really lifted their hearts now this is going to sink Dungannon's spirits it'll take uh, it'll take all the leadership of Willie Anderson to be able to lift this up well he really is pacing up and down there like a, a caged lion the big fella and uh, what a send off it would be if Dungannon could end his season and end his competitive career with a cup victory but there's a fair way to go so Derek McAleese to put Palomino ahead Oh, it's come off the post. Ronnie Carey, I think, calls for the mark, which is entitled to do it. Came off the post. A fine clearance kick by Paul Archer. And that was a very, very important miss for both sides. McAleese took his time as ever about that, and he hit it beautifully, but it came off the post. Well, Dungannon expected and waited. And Ballymena expected, and you don't get much closer than that. That didn't look desperately straight. It's well driven by Anderson, laid back to perfection. Well, there's Pollock. I thought Palomino were offside. Lovely dummy by Pollock. Great support from Matchett, but only a couple of metres out. That's well turned, picked up and driven by Palomino. Colin Wallace is in there and Bruce Logan. Matchett digs it out, has a wee glance. Somebody managed to spoil it and kicked through. And Graham Crothers has spotted that... Uh, the Dungannon defence was not behind the rear foot of that mall and he's given a penalty to Bellamina. Jim, this has been a very significant feature of the change in fortunes. This, Dun this Bellamina pack are putting pressure on where they're not getting the protection, Dungannon are not getting the protection. Wayne Pollock, who really has come into the game, makes a lot of ground, well supported by Matchett. Matchett driving through, leaves the ball away. It's clearly there, a little bit more composure by the Malamina players and they would have really been able to set up something. And there'll be a bit of a roar from the Braid men if this goes over. Well, there's the roar and it's gone over and for the first time in this game, Malamina go ahead and the tide may well have turned in their favour thanks to some spot-on goal kicking by the Irish international outside half. Derek McAleese, a fine kick. Jeremy Hastings. He's laid that away untidily. Nicely picked up by Blair. Archer tries to play a bit of soccer. It's gone loose. Out to Ronnie Carey, and Carey gets in. As Graham Crothers on the spot says that is a try, and Ronnie Carey has restored Van Gannon's lead immediately after Derek McAleese put Ballymena ahead. Well, it was rather scrappy. Blair ran out of support. The pass was half blocked. Archer did perhaps the right thing in putting it through. A wee bit of a fumble. It went loose. Nicely snapped up by Burns. And a dive at a scrum half would have been proud of. And Ronnie Carey finishes in some style. Yes. We see Duncan, a nice intelligent little uh, kick ahead by Archer who could do little else. Uh, beautiful skills by Burns picking the ball up, seeing the space and letting Carey get into the corner. Ashley Blair then. He's certainly taking his time. As he swept that in. Oh, that is sweet, sweet, sweet for Ashley Blair. He's kicked some great conversions. He's dropped a few goals this season. But that really was an absolute piece. And I have a look at that from no angle whatsoever. And he judged it quite perfectly. Great conversion by Blair. Pollock comes bursting through. Lays it back delightfully. 
Good play by Balamina and Dungannon come round the side and get offside. Mickey Rainey the skipper. Well, here's Enterprise. Davy Tweed, I'm not sure about Enterprise, but sheer strength and determination. Match it. McAleese. Burns takes it well. Clever enough little kick. Davy Smith had to turn. Match it in support. It was not deliberately high. Johnny Caskey bravely drives forward. Balamina have won that. McAleese has got himself extricated from that ruck. He hasn't got a lot of support though. Now he has. David Tweed rumbles and thunders forward. McKernan, Matchett, McAleese, Lang with Simpson and Buckley outside him. Here's Simpson and Buckley. Can they do it again? Inside Gary Leslie with great tackle by the prop forward and good support by Dungannon coming back in defence. Whoever wins this could be something on. Blair, oh smart kicking by Blair. They've all got to come back. Buckley. And he really had no option, Brian Buckley, but how clever of Ashley Blair. Jim, a tremendous period of play. Cut and thrust both by both sides. A great break by Bad Balamina. And what a marvellous tackle by Gary Leslie. Johnny Caskey, this uh, solid young man who's taken over from Steve Smith in the middle of the Balamina front row, has uh, got a bit of a thump. He really drove into Dungannon forwards. Here come the Dungannon forwards themselves, Gary Leslie. Blair waits, and Balamina penalised, and that could be just the reward for the pressure that Dungannon have wanted. Well, no wonder Keith McGarry is a study in concentration. This, perhaps, for the game and the cup. Oh, they had a look at each other, and McGarry runs back saying, come on, lads, you could have put the flags up a little bit earlier. Watch the touch, judges. There it was. And it just scraped inside. It's gone loose. Johnny Hastings wins it on the deck. And a man was offside. And Palomino have the penalty. Now, I don't think three points at this stage is uh, what they want. There are nine points adrift. And full marks to Balamina. Stephen Lusk, the man with the ball. Nicely done. Simpson. Davy Smith. Well, Davy Smith is right through. Well, this could be a final flourish from Balamina. And who knows? There's still a bit of time left. Davy Tweed thunders. And Tweed, 18 stones, has just lost it. And Dungannon, I think, have recovered. Play on, says the referee. There's the line, and there's the try. And I have a feeling it's Bruce Logan once again from close range. Well, it was stopped tantalizingly short, and it was Big Davy Tweed who picked it up. Now, he did wonderfully well. Look at the number of blue and white shirts were on him like flies on an elephant. Now, the ball seemed to spill forward from Davy Tweed's hand. It popped back on the Balamina side. Nobody really seemed to know what was going on. In went Derek McAleese and scooted out and Bruce Logan dived and scored. Derek McAleese has added the conversion in the meantime, and that really makes this game very, very interesting indeed. There's just two points in it, and we've about two minutes remaining. And Bruce Logan, as he did against Malone, has scored from close range. Pollock, the ever-present Pollock, picking the ball up, winning that vital ball. Tweed driving through against Blair, staying on his feet for as long as he possibly could, all stretched into the line we thought he'd lost it here Jim and then the Balamina pack driving over who picked it up it's very difficult to see isn't it Jim well it was Bruce Logan it just came popping back and Bruce Logan uh, from two or three meters out just found a gap good try delighted for him because he and Pollock really have been very strong in that Balamina back row Balamina wait match it match it still Mickey Rainey's got through there's Pollock to take it on, they've crossed the gain line, they've crossed the 22. A, pal a penalty would do Balamina, and it's gone to Dungannon. Well, and again somebody has said something, and Balamina, not for the first time, have uh, conceded 10 metres unnecessarily. And I'm not quite sure it is. Mickey Rainey's gone over, and uh, 
I do believe it's Derek McAleese that said something to Graham Crothers, and I've got to say that is very unlike Derek McAleese, who really has been uh, very much a gentleman in terms of uh, club and provincial and international rugby. A little bit of frustration there because he thought that, uh, well, three points and the winning of this game was going to be his. Ashley Blair puts it into touch, and Graham Crothers blows the whistle. Ashley Blair throws his arms aloft, and the cup goes back to Stevenson Park for the first time in 17 years. Well, what a moment. That says it all. The two biggest men in the field and the two oldest men in the field, 33 years old Davy Tweed and 38 years old Willie Anderson, embrace. And I'll tell you, I would like to try to separate those two over a pint tonight. This is Gwen Stevenson, the wife of Jim Stevenson, the Ulster branch president, hands over the senior cup to Dungannon's greatest servant, Willie Anderson. Well, commiserations to Bellamina receiving their runners-up medals. It's their fourth final in five seasons, and no doubt with uh, a few players like Brian Robinson coming back next season, Bellamina's fortunes will take a turn for the better. Willie, many congratulations. I suspect the old heart nearly gave up at the end. Yeah, I even had to do a few tackles as well at the end. <laughs> Out of character. <laughs> well, it's not often that I tackle, but... Uh, all credit to Balamina. I knew they were going to give us a tough game. It was very difficult for us in the last three games, maybe to get up to the pace and the hardness and maybe the speed and the timing. Uh, but all credit to my group of boys. They, they give it all. And uh, I'd like to thank Balamina for a tremendous game. But it's... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sleep with this cup tonight. Hugh McCackie, who played for Queen's and then for Ards, and now Dungannon, you achieved some fair success with Ards. Does it compare to this? Uh, obviously it compares, but uh, today was great. It's nice to be uh, now previously the top team in Ulster. It hasn't been confirmed. You may be skippering the side next year. A, a bit of a, a daunting task taken over from a man who's become a legend. <laughs> Still to be announced. I wish actually Willie would continue to play, then I wouldn't be the oldest. <laughs> well, one of the youngest is the man who made such a mark on the Ulster scene this year, Tyrone Howe. What's it like being on the same side as big Willie Anderson? Um, well, for me, it's a dream come true, really, to be, to be playing beside Paddy Johnson, be captain. My uh, man, excuse me, like Willie, it's fantastic, you know, and I think we really are all pleased that we've won today for him. The success of Dungan, I presume, has helped launch your own career. Yes, I mean, I can't, I can't complain about the way things have gone this season. It's been terrific. And I just hope it goes from strength to strength. And Gary Leslie, a man who's uh, had to bear some of the brunt of Willie Anderson shoving behind him on occasions. Oh, very much so. <laughs> it's hard. It, when he starts talking, it's hard to keep him quiet. As long, as long as he keeps shoving him, all right. Occasionally, he's had to sort of say a few uh, harsh words about discipline and one thing. I'm sure you've got used to that. Oh, yes, yeah, very much so. I mean, I, I really slight digression in the semi-final, but hopefully now it's over me. <laughs> Derek McAleese, after the disappointment,